Hi guys, I'm making this recording of our Sunday School lesson because, as you figured out, we are not having Sunday School right now. Um, we're all sort of quarantined in our houses, I know. Um, and so I thought actually this lesson, when I read it, it was really something we could apply to our lives. The last few days of Jesus' life here on earth were filled with fear and uncertainty for him. Um, not exactly in the same way that we're experiencing right now, but many of us might be feeling some fear and uncertainty. So let's look at um, some of the scriptures related to the Last Supper and see what we can learn from him about what we should be doing to alleviate our own fears and to um, build community. I want you to imagine that youth group is about to start and suddenly a strange woman enters the room and wordlessly begins to wash the feet of someone in the room. The person who's getting a foot bath seems unfazed. What would you say? Would this make you uncomfortable? Now I want you to imagine that it's Christmas dinner at your house and you're gathered with your friends and your closest family. As the meal is about to begin, the host begins to talk about his or her coming death and asks you to think of him each time you gather to eat Christmas dinner in the future. How would you respond? In a time that Jesus felt great fear, he used his time to serve others in his community. He used his last days to be in the presence of others and to demonstrate love and compassion. So let's take a look at um, a few of the scriptures that were describing these last days. In Matthew chapter 26, verses 6 through 13, we can see Jesus being anointed at Bethany. Now, when Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an alabaster flask of a very expensive ointment, and she poured it on his head as he reclined at a table. And when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this could have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a beautiful thing to me. You will always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. In pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for burial. Truly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. So when Jesus says, you will always have the poor with you, but you won't always have me. Um, I know that the first time I read it, I might have thought this sound, sounded sort of self-centered. Um, but if you focus really on what Jesus is telling them, it's to pay attention to the act that she is doing. Jesus telling us that he wants us to help others and that the opportunity to help those in your community is a gift. Now looking at this one, John 13 verses 1 through 20, before the feast of Passover when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments, and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. And then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing, you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. 
That was why he said, not all of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, <clears throat> I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but the scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I am telling you this now before it takes place, and when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send receives me. Whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. So here, Jesus' statement of, unless I wash you, you won't have a place with me. You know, there's lots of bathing stuff going on here. But it shows the significance of the cleansing of his, that of his death will bring to humanity. His sacrifice is what washed Peter. This, like baptism, was an outward sign of an inward change. Jesus says Peter won't have a place with him until Peter is washed. So in other words, um, it has a lot to do with any, the inevitability of what is going to happen and how this is going to be an event for humanity that is going to offer them a cleansing. And again, sort of how important it is from Jesus's point of view, that we should serve each other with compassion, um, not one higher than the other. You can see here, you know, he talks about the servants and the masters, not one is greater than the other, that we should all be compassionate and serve each other. And then let's look at just a, the last few. Here's where uh, Judas betrays Jesus. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the 12, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised him some money. And he sought an opportunity to betray him. And on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where's my guest room and where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. And he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready there prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the 12. And as they were reclining at the table and eating, Jesus said, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and say to him one after another, is it I? He said to them, it is one of the 12, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the son of man goes as it is written of him. But woe to the man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And as they were eating, he took bread and after blessing it broke and said to them, Take, this is my body. And he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he said to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for the many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. These passages draw special attention to the attitude we bring when we come to the communion table. It is a time when we are present together as a community of children of God. It is a reminder that we should take part in this ceremony in a humble, thankful, and obedient way. It's a time of community and presence with one another as we remember the suffering that Jesus endured on our behalf. So how does this apply to our lives today? Well, in this time when we have a bit of uncertainty in our own community, we can remember that, um, you know, we're kind of stuck in our homes, but um, this is the perfect time to be reaching out spending time with our family, as well as possibly finding ways that we can serve each other. We can be humble 
and um, pay attention to what others in our community and our family need and maybe put on a humble servant's heart and see what we can do to serve others. Um, this is great, of course, because this is what Jesus wants us to do. But it is true that when you are fearful and anxious, one of the best things you can do to curb those fears is to focus on what you can do and what you can control. And so by focusing on gratitude, the things you're grateful for, as well as reaching out to others as much as you can near you and helping them get what they need, um, you will also help to heal your own heart right now that might be a bit distressed or worried just about any uncertainty as we wait to see um, how everything plays out. All right, well, hopefully I will see you in church soon.